In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you import data from an Excel worksheet into SPSS. In the course of doing so, we'll also learn how to transform a variable that has been coded as a string into a numeric type. Right, the first thing to do is to take a look at the Excel spreadsheet from which we want to import data. You can see here that we've got five columns. The first column, subject ID, is just a code which represents the unique identifier of each person in our hypothetical study. The other four columns are variables. So you've got gender where zero is female and one is male. You've got three possibilities for education. You've got dog owner where zero is not owning a dog and one is owning a dog. And you've got frisbee throwing distance, which is the distance that each participant managed to throw a frisbee on one trial. It's possible it's a bit of an odd study. Before we import this data into SPSS, there are a couple of things we've got to look out for. First is that you have your variable names in the first row and that there isn't a gap between the first row and the second row. The second thing to note is that we have coded education as a string. As I mentioned in the previous tutorial, ideally you should code as a numeric type. Now a lot of videos on importing from Excel will suggest that you alter your data here within Excel. I'm going to show you how to alter that once you get it into SPSS. The final thing to take into account is that you might need to clean up your data before you import it into SPSS. So for example, if you had say 50 meters there rather than just 50, you'd do well to get rid of the meters. This is particularly important for earlier versions of SPSS. The latest version is actually pretty adept at working out the correct data type on import. OK, let's switch back to SPSS and I'll show you how to do the import. OK, so choose File. Now, we've got a couple of choices here. For the newest version of SPSS, you can go Import Data and then choose Excel. I'm not going to do that because using Open Data gives better backward compatibility with older versions. So click Data, and then where it says Files of Type, you need to choose Excel. Assuming you've navigated to the folder with your Excel file, you'll see it pop up like that. If you double click it, you'll get the import dialog. Now some of these options aren't going to be available on all versions of SPSS, but I'm going to take you through them all, so just ignore anything that doesn't apply to your version of the program. OK, so an Excel spreadsheet can be made up of different worksheets, and this allows you to choose which worksheet from which you want to import data. Range allows you to use Excel notation, for example, A1 colon B10, to import a subset of the Excel data. Read variable names from first row of data, that's self-explanatory. It means it takes the variable names from your first row. If the names you have in your first row don't fit the SPSS naming convention, then it will automatically fix that for you. Percentage of values to determine data types. This is how the latest version of SPSS assigns data type. In this case, if 95% of the values in a column match a particular type, then SPSS will assign that type to the variable. This value here can be anything above 50. If SPSS is unable to determine a data type on that basis, it will assign the variable to a string type. The last three options here, well, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this one just tells SPSS to ignore anything hidden within the Excel worksheet. And these two remove spaces at the beginning or at the end of entries. And here you can see a preview of the data where these symbols represent the data type that SPSS thinks it's dealing with. The scale, that's nominal. Though in my experience, this isn't wildly accurate. Right, we're ready to import the data. Just press OK. And away we go. As you can see, SPSS has imported the data into an entirely new window. You've got your variable names up here, and you can see the names have been concatenated. There are no longer any spaces. Data all looks correct, so the next stage is to hit the variable view and see whether the various attributes have been set correctly. So under type you can see that the import functions correctly identified that four of the five columns are numeric. Education is the only string type and we'll change that in a minute. Under level of measurement the program was correctly identified gender, education, and dog owner as being nominal and also that frisbee throwing distance is 
interval scale. That's actually pretty impressive. Under label, you can see that where it's concatenated the variable name, it's included the variable name that appeared in Excel as a label. Right, there are two further things we have to do to prepare our data. The first is to set up our values for our nominal variables, and the second is to change the string type here to a numeric type. Okay, let's switch to the data view. See, we've got zeros and ones for gender and dog owner. I explained in the previous tutorial how you set up value label for numeric data. I'll do it for one of them here. So you click here, click your value there, and your label here. Press add. Do the same again. One and name. Add. Press OK. We return to the data view you'll see it's now coded with the value labels. That was easy enough, but what about changing the education variable to numeric data? SPSS also makes that pretty easy. If you click on the transform menu and then go to automatic recode, you'll see you get a dialogue with your variables on the left hand side here. But we need to move the education variable over to here. So just drag it or click that button. The way this works is that SPSS will recode the old variable into a new variable. So you have to name your new variable. Click add new name and then press OK. And it looks as if it hasn't worked because this is identical to that. That's actually not the case. If you hit that you'll see you've got your numeric data in here. So what's happened is that SPS has created the new variable, it's coded it as numeric data, and very cleverly it's added value labels in for you. And you can see your three variable values there. Of course you've now got two education variables which you don't want, so you can just right click on this one, hit clear, and if you go over to your data view, you'll see you've just got the one education variable. If you hit this toggle button here, they both go back to their value labels. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and you're confident you could import data from an Excel spreadsheet. Please like and share and visit easyspss.com for more SPSS tutorials.